Well, good afternoon, folks. <clears throat> 27th of November. 1.15 p.m. or 13.15 p.m. So, <clears throat> the other day I paid a visit to the parish church of All Saints Elm in Elm, Wiz Beach, Cambridgeshire. So today I thought I'd take a little walk to another church down the road, which is uh, <coughs> also run by the same vicar. He runs the Elm Church. And this is St. Edmund's Parish of Emnif, which is about, about two miles away from Elm Church. So here we are. Having a little walk around. Unfortunately, we can't gain access to this one. But I oh, was sort of walking around looking at it and doesn't look as well kept anyway as Elms Church. But it's still fascinating. Still a lovely old building, as you can see. Lots of character. There is some stained glass, but it's not worth me taking any pictures because you won't see it properly. Unless we get on the inside. <clears throat> I'll walk around here. I was trying to avoid treading on graves, but I'll kind of give up because... Well, in here, you, you just won't know if you're standing on any or not. And you can see some of the stained glass. I'll have to come one day when it's open and uh, go in and have a look. I was just walking around and, yeah, you know, God, some of these are so, so old. 1884, 1891, 1899, I don't even see that one, 18, can't even see. Uh, well, these are all old, all these around, lots of old ones. And then there's a section over the back behind these trees, which I don't really want to go into because there's people over there laying flowers and stuff on relatives' graves and things, so I don't want to interrupt anyone. But these are all the old graves. 1829, look. Oh, she was only 33. Formerly of France. 1989. Oh. Hey. So, I needed to get out because Zindor's pulling me here out because I had a bit of bad news yesterday. And uh, I was going to stir crazy at home. I was at home. I was going to stir crazy at my sister's. So, so I will shall come for a walk to Emnif and get a little video around the church here. As we did one on uh, Elm, I thought I'd do one on Emnif as well. Oh look, you see this is what I'm so old, look. It's that old, there's trees and everything going out of it, but that in there. Oh, you can see that. Looks like a big flower pot in someone's tomb. Be interesting to see. Let's have a little walk around this side. Let's see if we can get under all the trees and everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is still, believe it or not, even with these trees, there's graves here. Uh, I do apologise if I'm treading on anyone's graves. God bless, rest in peace. Fascinating. Fascinating. And morbid. <clears throat> and sad. Oh. Oh. You'd think they'd have uh, some sort of groundsman that maintain the land or something. Oh, sorry. This is the sort of thing 
I need people to volunteer for. No, it's probably not the, the nicest job in the world, but I'd quite happily go around and tidy off people's graves, keep them looking good for families and things like that. Look at that. Look at them. The weeds and the ivy growing over that. Ah, 25 past one now. So, St. Edmund's Church of Emnith, also run by the vicar. Dawn something Mason, I think her name is, and apparently she's the vicar of quite a few. The only work out of a couple of, uh, mainly work out of a couple of parishes. I'm assuming this is, um, God, these are all new. They're all new. Look at them, over there. We will go and take a look in a minute. We'll wait until the people over there have done what they've done. And we'll have a little gander. I don't know any history about this church. I didn't have a look. Like I say, I just wanted to get out of the house. I was feeling a bit down and low. I just wanted to get some fresh air, go for a walk, try and clear my mind a little bit. And what other place to visit than the house of the Lord? Or one of the houses of the Lord. <clears throat> Even though it's run by a female vicar, and really and truthfully, women shouldn't minister. Ah, oh, look. Remember the little door? <coughs> Elm Church. Have a look at this one. Look at that. <coughs> uh, yeah, it's level with me head, but you can see down here. Doorstep is a lot higher than my feet. I would say, oh, that door, I'd say it's probably a Probably about four foot at a max. Yeah, look. See? What a shame. People don't look after these things. I'm just coming into the foyer. Can't actually get in there. It's locked. Uh, so I don't think you can get a key for this one. Yeah, it is locked. And they've got an electoral roll, look. All the names of the people that live in Emnith. 44. Only 44 people live in this little village. There's got all their names there and all. I've never seen that before. A lecture roll inside a church. Interesting. So. Yeah, it's got a steeple on the top as well. Same as um, Elm. It isn't as nice as Elm Church. But it's still got a lot of character. Still a very old building, obviously. Been here for a long, long time. Like I said, I don't really know any of the um, history of this one. But I'll have a look. And maybe add another little video onto the end of this with some information when I get back. On how old the church is and things that have happened here, everything else. Oh, look, stained glass up here as well. But I don't know if you can see that. It's a tiny little hole, just up here, in the stained glass. Shame, real shame. Are the clock's still working. Hey, afternoon. But yes, another, another stunning old church. Absolutely beautiful. Really nice. <laughs> See that for me. Let's come over at this angle. See. I'm not going to take any pictures of this one. Uh, oh, that bit looks. That looks like they've built it up new. That looks fresh. That bit there in the corner. So maybe this one might have a little bit of. Uh, had a bit of a rebuild as well. Actually, I'm looking at some new bricks if you look just up there in the middle section by the windows. 
So it probably has had work done to it. It's probably almost collapsed or something at some time and had to be rebuilt or repointed and had work done to it. But stunning. Another stunning little church. It's the St. Edmunds of Emnith. Also run by Dawn Mason, the vicar of Elm. <clears throat> and uh, I know, she's, like I say, she's just works from a few because she's the only vicar in this area, I think. What I believe, not 100% certain, so don't quote me on that, like I say, until I get back and do a little bit of digging. We will not know, not unless you Google it yourself. Oh, so, there we go. I've done my little walk down to Emnith. I've had me 15 minutes of fresh air, which I needed. Calm myself down a little bit. And now, I'll take a slow walk back. I'm out of coffee, sit down, do a bit of Googling, a bit of internet fishing for information on the church. So we can add on to it. Look at it. Absolutely stunning. There's just so many beautiful little towns and villages around here. There's one not far from here. When I used to drive up to my mum's in um, Whiz Beach. I used to come normally on the way home, or well, sometimes on the, on the way up as well. I drive through the two little villages called Outwell and Upwell, which are also beautiful little places. Which one day I'll try and get along to. There's a couple of stunning little churches down there as well. Ah. And we shall see. We shall see. All in good time. <clears throat> I'm gonna find my lighter. Lost my lighter. You're right, mate. Oh. Lovely. It's nice to get out. Have a little walk through some of these little villages. See some of the houses is fascinating as well. Absolutely beautiful. Only downside is <clears throat> weather's crap, as you can see, yet again. And I'm really not wearing the right attire on my feet for this type of weather. I already feel my toes are getting a little bit wet. Need to get myself a pair of hiking or walking boots. Because I've left my other ones at my sister's in Kent. Just walking back towards Elm, back from Emnith. Like I say, there's lots of stunning little churches all around in all these little towns and villages in Cambridgeshire that I'd like to get around, make more videos off to go with the other one. Slowly, slowly losing sight of the church now. So, yep, I'm going to continue my walk back. Go and do some digging, like I said. Get some information about the church and everything. See what we can find out. See the history, how long it's been there. <coughs> See if it's uh, ever suffered any damages and had to have any work done on it, which it looks like it has. And I'll put that up, do a little video, and put that up on the end of this one. And uh, shall post it. Well, anyway, everybody have a good day. Be safe, God bless, take care. Bye bye, folks. Good morning, folks. It's Thursday the 28th, 9.45 a.m. I was going to do a bit of digging. Obviously, I went to Emnith Church yesterday. Uh, had a little look around St. Edmund's Church of Emnith. 
I was going to do a bit of history digging on it yesterday, but by the time I got back, I had things to do. I got a little bit tired, and uh, I did have a look, but I didn't bother doing the video. So I'm up, washed, dressed, and I thought I'd do it now. So I was having a read about it last night, and um, it's really interesting. Another, another church with lots of history and. It's, it's quite interesting, really amazing. So anyway, so I'll read this right up from the Norfolk Heritage Explorer, which basically tells you all about it. <clears throat> so first off, we will start with the summary. So the summary for St. Edmund's on here says, this is a large and important church. The chancel was built in the 12th century and was extended to the east in the mid 13th century with a grand east window. The north chapel was rebuilt in the late 13th century, blocking the clerestory. Much of the church was rebuilt in the late 15th to the early 16th century. The churchyard contains many interesting gravestones, which it does, as we saw on the video that I did yesterday prior to the one, <clears throat> or prior to this one that I'm going to add on to the end of that one. Um, for you, for those of you who don't know what clerestory is, clerestory is um, basically it's it's a part of the building that goes higher than the the roof. So basically, like the towers or you know like the steeple, whatever goes higher is the clerestory. So it says there's no images on here, but you've seen it anyway in the previous video. So we'll go down a bit to the full description. So Saint Edmund's Church. Large and important church, chancel 12th century, transitional with remains of clerestory and evidence of side chapels, extended to east in the mid 13th century with grand east window, north chapel rebuilt late 13th century blocking clerestory, part of the nave south wall predates late 15th century to early 16th century rebuilding of south aisle, south chapel, nave, north aisle and tower. North aisle apparently the last part to be done, South porch, some same period. North chapel divided into vestry, probably in the mid 16th century. Chancel and South clerestory, 15th century removed in 1886. Very fine 15th to 16th century roof, good 16th century tombs, one by stone, bell frame. Good 13th century carved coffin lids. Churchyard contains a number of good headstones, of which 20 are listed grade 2, and the church is grade 1. I've never seen that before. I'm going to have a look into that in a minute. Headstones. Grade 2. Okay. I didn't know they could do that. So July 1987, excavation and watching brief. Observation carried out on the repairs to the roof and in the North Chapel. Excavation revealed pavement of 14th to 15th century tiles. In the loose rubble above the pavement, loose fragments of 13th and 14th century tiles were discovered and some were of unusual form. The loose tiles have been donated to Norwich Castle Museum. CS2S6 for further details, and Lang and Lopez, 24th of June 2013. 1991 excavation. Following the discovery of tiled pavements in 1987, the remainder of the chapel floor was replaced in 1991 to the west of the previous observations, and a second pavement was uncovered by E. Rose for NAU. It was situated around the central pier of the Chancel Arcade. The smaller Flemish tiles have been dated to the 1400, and a larger tile occurred in the late 15th to mid 16th centuries. Loose fragments of other 14th to 15th century tiles were also recovered. This pavement has been suggested to have been a standing for an altar against a paraclose screen. Further tiles found. CS2S7 for information. May to August 2000, watching brief on groundworks for new toilets. No undisturbed natural materials found, indicating that the footing trenches had not reached the bottom of the disturbance caused by the building of the tower. The evidence shows that the north aisle was built after the tower. 2000, 14th century lead glass roof tiles found during watching roof C, blah blah blah. Monument types, church, medieval 1066 AD to 1539 AD. The floor, medieval 1066 AD to 1539 AD. Associated finds, floor tile, medieval 1066 AD to 1539. Inscribed object, medieval 1066 AD to 1539 AD. Floor tile, post medieval 1540 AD to 1900 AD. Gravestone, post-medieval, 1540 AD to 1900 AD. That's associated finds. Sources and further reading. 
So there's quite a lot. Parish summary. Let's have a look on that. So I'll put the link to this on there, and then I'll uh, in a minute we'll have a look and see what else we can find. No, oh, make me hear miss. <laughs> So, Parish Summary of Eminence. This Parish Summary is an overview of the large amount of information held for the parish and only selected examples of sites and finds in each period are given. It has been beyond the scope of the project to carry out detailed research into the historical background, documents, maps or other sources. But we hope that the Parish Summaries will encourage users to refer to the detailed records and to consult the bibliographical sources referred to below. Feedback and any corrections are welcomed by email to theheritage at norfolk.gov.uk. Emnith is a Fenland parish on the border with Cambridgeshire in the southwest of Norfolk. The parish is south of Walsoken and north of Outwell. The modern, modern villages of Emnith, Emnith, Hungate and Hollyend all lie within its boundaries. The name Emnith is Old English and, it means, and its meaning has been debated. It may mean smooth meadow, junction of streams on the river Amenenen, however you say that, river confluence belonging to Iana, or mowing grass meadow. The Hungate suffix suggests this area may have been associated with the keeping or rearing of hounds. Whatever the meaning of the name, it is clear that it comes from Old English and therefore probably has Saxon origins. It is therefore unusual that the village is not mentioned in the Doomsday Book. This may be because the village was valued with another parish and not named. It does not necessarily mean the village didn't exist. There is evidence for activity in the parish from the Roman period and metal detectorates have found many medieval and post-medieval finds. No prehistoric objects have been found here. This is unusual maybe because of the low-lying nature of the surrounding landscape. The fens were not drained until the Roman period and were a marginal area where people may have come frequently to hunt wildfowl or collect reeds, but were unlikely to have lived. The absence of finds does not mean the landscape was not utilised, but rather that the evidence has not yet been found and that activity was likely to be seasonal or temporary and therefore the evidence for it is less likely to survive and it is harder to find. picture or something here, go down and read that in a minute. In the Roman period the fens were drained and we start to see more archaeological evidence for human activity. Roman coins and Roman pottery have been found. At one site a scatter of Roman finds including oyster shell, Roman pottery and personal ornaments may suggest an area of concentrated activity. An excavation has also identified Roman features but it is not clear if they are related to the occupation or more temporary use. Interestingly Part of the head of a Roman figurine has also been recovered. This is the only top part of the head, so it is hard to identify, but it may be part of a small statue of a Roman god. A Roman coin minted in Greece found at the same site, also unusual. An early Saxon square-headed brooch from Emnith. So I'm just going to show you this quickly because there's a little picture here. Oh, drop the phone. A little picture here. I don't know if you see that. So, I'm assuming that's supposed to be brooch. No, is that supposed to be brooch or brooch? But anyway. So, we continue. In the Saxon period, the earliest evidence for activity is three early Saxon brooches. Brooches found by metal detectors and one fragment of early Saxon pottery. Two Middle Saxon strap ends, one decorated with the head of an animal and a Middle Saxon pin, have also been found late Saxon. Pottery, a late Saxon or medieval ring, and a possible late Saxon lead spindle hall. Decorated, decorated with stars have also been removed, recovered rather. There was clearly activity in this area in the Saxon period, despite a lack of documentary evidence. A medieval strap in from Emnith with the initials S and J. So they've got like a belt buckle. That's what it looks like to me. Some sort of belt buckle. I'll show you this one as well. There we go. So, continue again. So, so the earliest mention of Emnith in documents was in 1170. It is clear, therefore, that the village was settled by this date. St. Edmund's Church was built in the 12th century and extended dramatically into the 13th century. Excuse me. So actually, Elm dates back. Elm Church is, even though it's better well kept, it dates back earlier than this. As I said in the video about um, the parish church of Elm, the earliest mention I could find of that was 656 AD. So, anyway. 
Other medieval structures have been demolished. Hag Beach Hall, a medieval hall was demolished in 1887, although its 17th century stables remain have been converted into houses. The medieval hall on the site of the 17th century Oxborough Hall was also demolished when the new hall was built. Other buildings have disappeared. A parochial chapel at Burke in Emnith was recorded in the document in 1389, but its location has since been lost. Other sites have lost their names and sense of importance. A medieval moated site has been recorded and the seal used by Pope Innocent III to secure documents was found here. This and other finds including medieval seals, match, mattresses, a horse harness pendant, and medieval coin suggest the site was of some importance. Domestic sites with less status have also been identified. Medieval hearths, probably related to occupation, were excavated at Bird's Corner and metal detecting has uncovered many medieval finds, including pottery coins and personal objects on one site. These include a spectacular strap, end with the initial S and J. The number of items recovered at this site suggests this area. This was an area of medieval settlement. There are several records dating from the post-medieval period to post-medieval dovecots are still standing, although the roof has fallen in one, fallen in on one of them. Vanyas Hall is a mid-17th century building which originally had a service wing. Newfield's farmhouse was built in the 16th century and has since been split into two houses. Both structures are still standing. The site of a post-medieval wind pump is recorded on a 19th century map. Other sites can by, be identified by local names. Tile Kil, Kiln Bridge is near a site where an area of burnt brick has been discovered. This suggests this might be the site of possible medieval tile kiln. The archaeological evidence shows that there was human activity in the area from the Roman period onwards. The lack of prehistoric evidence is unusual, but it's probably explained by the waterlogged nature of the landscape until the Romans drained it. Most evidence for settlement comes from medieval and post-medieval periods. Further reading. So there's a couple of links there as well. So yeah, I'll post this one as well. And the link's underneath with the other one. Back. So yeah, like I say, as you can see, it's a lot of history in this area with the churches. So I'm I'm really keen now to get across to Outwell and Upwell as well and get their churches. I'm gonna have a, a little look and see what other ones are close by that I might be able to get to. I'm going into Wisbeach today for a meeting, so <coughs> I might have a little look in Wisbeach. I'm pretty certain there's a church there. So I might have a little look, take a photo or two, and maybe revisit another day and do a video there as well. And we'll see what history we can dig up on that. So so there's a little bit of history on Emnith or St. Edmund's Church in Emnith for you. Um, like I say, I'll put links in the bottom of the video if anyone's interested and wants to have a look and read a bit more because there's a lot of history a lot of links to other things and the finds that they have. Let's go back down for one second. There was something I wanted to have a look at that I clicked on. I didn't click on rather. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? I've lost it. Yep, I've lost it. Well, anyway, so yeah, I'll add the links to the bottom in the description so people can take a look themselves. Uh, I'm going to carry on, like I say, see what I can find and see uh, what's in my speech so I can have a look later on after I've had my meeting. But for now, that's me. I'm going to finish my coffee, have a cigarette and uh, I'll catch you guys soon. Hope everyone's well. Take care. God bless people.